Hello guys, Winston here, and I need to warn you, I'm going into Discount John Saunders mode again today, that means less narrative, more geeking out, hopefully you survive. A few weeks ago, a company called X-Edge Tools sent me some rather unique cutters for my consideration. X-Edge has a line of end mills for soft plastics called the Razor. These are extremely low helix end mills with chip breakers, something I haven't come across firsthand before. Chip breakers are these gaps in the flutes that prevent an end mill from slicing off long continuous strands of material when cutting. These voids interrupt chip formation and produce smaller shavings. Small chips can be cleared more easily and are less likely to get tangled up or otherwise cause problems when cutting. So after doing some research into where I could economically source large volumes of plastic, I settled on cellular PVC to be my first test subject. Cellular PVC is often marketed as trim board in hardware stores, and it's a lower density version of the stuff you'd find in plumbing parts. It's basically aerated PVC, which turns out to be both a good and a bad thing. On one hand, it can be cut really easily. People use regular woodworking tools on it all the time, and it's a common alternative to wood trim. On the other hand, cellular PVC's low density means it has very low thermal mass. It doesn't have much ability to soak up heat like what might be generated by friction with an end mill, so if the X-Edge's recommended feeds and speeds were wrong, I'd have a big gooey mess on my hands. These feeds and speeds, by the way, are tailored towards high-speed spindles, which is perfect for hobby CNC's fitted with routers. 24,000 RPM is a piece of cake on the Shapeoko. What's a little trickier are these feed rates. The Shapeoko is, by default, limited to 5,000 millimeters per minute, or about 200 inches per minute. X-Edge claims that its end mills can be run in PVC at 500 inches per minute or more, and I'm assuming they mean cellular PVC in this case because in full density plastics they're a little more conservative. I might be wrong though. Since limits are meant to be broken, and gerbil settings are really easy to reprogram, I planned on eventually hitting the upper bound of their prescribed feed rates. So I jacked up parameters 110 and 111 from 5000 millimeters per minute to 13,000. Dollar sign, parameter number, equals, new value, done. This enables the Shapeoko to reach 500 inches per minute. Because I'm not crazy enough to do my first test at 500 inches per minute, I started at 75 inches per minute for my 8th inch end mill and 150 inches per minute for my quarter inch end mill. I stepped up incrementally to 200 and 500 inches per minute for my 8th inch and quarter inch end mills respectively. I did slotting tests at 1.5 times the tool diameter and adaptive tests at 3 times the tool diameter and 40% optimal load. In the end, the razors handled the tests without a problem, but given the material, I'm not sure how significant that actually is. I tested these against more generic end mills and both were able to reach the upper bound of X-Edge's recommended feed rates, although the 8th inch end mill exhibited some weirdness during the ramp in for slotting. Maybe it was just dull. I wouldn't read too much into these results though because cellular PVC doesn't really do a great job at testing the chip evacuation properties of an end mill. It forms really fluffy, compressible chips that disintegrate on contact. I don't think it's a really good stress test. I'm going to have to run some trials in other materials to really discern the performance advantage of these tools. But for now, let's stick with PVC. I'm curious about this claim of even faster feed rates at higher RPMs. Is this something the Shapeoko can actually handle? Let's find out. I'm upping the speed limit to 25,500 millimeters per minute and increasing the acceleration rate by 20%. Let's try a cut at 800 inches per minute. Now I did the math and it's going to take about 5 inches for the Shapeoko to accelerate to and decelerate from full speed. D equals 1 half AT squared, right? Basic high school physics. My test cut needs to be more than 10 inches long, so for this test I'm going to cut a long narrow pocket about 13 inches long. That won't give me a ton of time at full speed, but it'll give both the machine and the end mill plenty of opportunity to fail. We're doing adaptive clearing at a half inch depth of cut, 40% optimal load, and slot clearing enabled. This strategy clears a small channel in the middle of your pocket to make room for your end mill to spiral outwards with the appropriate optimal load. And the verdict is... Yeah, the Shapeoko can move, but more importantly, cellular PVC doesn't come close to putting up a fight. With a good sharp end mill, it machines like butter. So then, what can we do with this stuff? I didn't buy a length of trim board just to make chips. What's something useful I can make from this? How about a tool organizer? I'm long overdue for one, and PVC should be more dimensionally stable than wood in the long run. I'll model up a 14 inch long plank with some pockets for loose items, holes for quarter inch hardware, and slots for clamp storage. 2D toolpaths are all you need to cut this thing out. I'll adaptive clear out the wider cavities and use pocketing ops to get the holes. 
Then I'll true up everything with contour operations before cutting the organizer free. It should be a piece of cake since I'm confident in these feeds and speeds now. I'm using some double-sided tape to keep my finished part in place, but also using clamps to guarantee that nothing shifts on me during more aggressive cuts. The 8th inch razor is first up to bat to knock out the smaller features like the holes and also the slots where I want a smaller corner radius. Then the quarter inch end mill comes in to do the rest. and the finished result works really, really well. The porosity of the PVC means it'll probably discolor over time from dirt and oil, but that won't affect its function. As a material, I think Trimboard is excellent for basic 2D prototyping, plus you can even thermoform it to a degree. So overall, I'm pretty pleased with this mini project and the capabilities of the material and my machine that I've now discovered, but that doesn't leave me with a nice satisfying way to wrap up this video. I still don't know the limits of these end mills or if I can even hit them on my Shape Oko. My CNC may give out long before these cutters choke. So I've got some polypropylene in the form of a cutting board and some starboard HDPE on deck to test in a future video. And that's where I'd like to solicit some advice from you guys. If you have any tips for high speed machining in plastics, let me know. Like for example, is my 40% optimal load okay? I was pretty much going with the Fusion 360 defaults. Should I perhaps look into using some compressed air to assist with chip evacuation? Are there any quirks with different plastics that I should know about? Is there an ideal SFM for one type versus another? I know for finishing acrylic, sometimes you want to ride the end mill just at the very edge of thermally softening the plastics. I am genuinely learning as I go, so feel free to drop knowledge on me in the comments down below. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I'll be back with another CNC-related video in about two weeks.